This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 0 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar by Ludovic Lazarus Zamenhof. Introduction The reader will doubtless take up this little work with an incredulous smile, supposing that he is about to peruse the impracticable schemes of some good citizen of Utopia. I would, therefore, in the first place, beg of him to lay aside all prejudice and treat seriously and critically the question brought before him. I need not here point out the considerable importance to humanity of an international language, a language unconditionally accepted by everyone, and the common property of the whole world. How much time and labour we spend in learning foreign tongues, and yet when travelling in foreign countries, we are, as a rule, unable to converse with other human beings in their own language. How much time, labour and money are wasted in translating the literary productions of one nation into the language of another, and yet if we rely on translations alone, we can become acquainted with but a tithe of foreign literature. Were there but an international language, all translations would be made into it alone, as into a tongue intelligible to all and works of an international character would be written in it in the first instance. The Chinese wall dividing literatures would disappear, and the works of other nations would be as readily intelligible to us as those of our own authors. Books being the same for everyone, education, ideals, convictions, aims would be the same too, and all nations would be united in a common brotherhood. Being compelled, as we now are, to devote our time to the study of several different languages, we cannot study any of them sufficiently well, and there are but few persons who can even boast a complete mastery of their mother tongue. On the other hand, languages cannot progress towards perfection, and we are often obliged, even in speaking our own language, to borrow words and expressions from foreigners, or to express our thoughts inexactly. How different would the case be? had we but two languages to learn. We should know them infinitely better, and the languages themselves would grow richer and reach a higher degree of perfection than is found in any of those now existing. And yet, though language is the prime motor of civilization, and to it alone we owe the having raised ourselves above the level of other animals, difference of speech is a cause of antipathy, nay, even of hatred between people as being the first thing to strike us on meeting. Not being understood, we keep aloof, and the first notion that occurs to our minds is not to find out whether the others are of our own political opinions, or whence their ancestors came from thousands of years ago, but to dislike the strange sound of their language. Anyone who has lived for a length of time in a commercial city whose inhabitants were of different unfriendly nations, will easily understand what a boon would be conferred on mankind by the adoption of an international idiom, which, without interfering with domestic affairs or the private life of nations, would play the part of an official and commercial dialect, at any rate in countries inhabited by people of different nationalities. The immense importance which it may well be imagined an international language would acquire in science, commerce, etc., I will not here expatiate on. Whoever has but once bestowed a thought on the subject will surely acknowledge that no sacrifice would be too great if by it we could obtain a universal tongue. It is, therefore, imperative that the slightest effort in that direction should be attended to. The best years of my life have been devoted to the momentous cause which I am now bringing before the public, and I hope that, on account of the importance of the subject, my readers will peruse this pamphlet attentively to the end. I shall not here enter upon an analysis of the various attempts already made to give the public a universal language, but will content myself with remarking that these efforts have amounted either to a short system of mutually intelligible signs, 
or to a natural simplification of the grammar of existing modern languages, with a change of their words into arbitrarily formed ones. The attempt of the first category were quickly seen to be too complicated for practical use, and so faded into oblivion. Those of the second were, perhaps entitled to the name of languages, but certainly not international languages. The inventors called their tongues universal. I know not why, possibly because no one in the whole world except themselves could understand a single word, written or spoken in any of them. If a language, in order to become universal, has but to be named so, then forsooth the wish of any single individual can frame, out of an existing dialect, a universal tongue. All these authors naively imagined that their essays would be enthusiastically welcomed and taken up by the whole world, and as this unanimous welcome is precisely what the cold and indifferent world declines to give, when there is no chance of realising any immediate benefit, it is not much to be marvelled at if these brilliant attempts came to nothing. The greater part of the world was not in the slightest degree interested in the prospect of a new language, and the persons who really cared about the matter thought it scarcely worth while to learn a tongue which none but the inventor could understand. When the whole world, said they, has learnt this language, or at least several million people, we will do the same. And so a scheme, which had it but been able to number some thousands of adepts before its appearance in public, would have been enthusiastically hailed, came into the world an utter fiasco. If the Volapuke, one of the latest attempts at a universal tongue, has indeed its adepts, it owes its popularity solely to the idea of its being a universal language, and that idea has in itself something so attractive and sublime that true enthusiasts, leaders in every new discovery, are ready to devote their time in the hope that they may, perchance, win the cause. But the number of enthusiasts, after having risen to a certain number, will remain stationary, and, as the unfeeling and indifferent world, will never consent to take any pains in order to speak with the few, this attempt will, like its predecessors, disappear without having achieved any practical victory. I have always been interested in the question of a universal language, but as I did not feel myself better qualified for the work than the authors of so many other fruitless attempts, I did not risk running into print, and merely occupied myself with imaginary schemes and a minute study of the problem. At length, however, some happy ideas, the fruits of my reflections, incited me to further work, and induced me to essay the systematic conquest of the many obstacles, which beset the path of the inventor of a new, rational, universal language. As it appears to me that I have almost succeeded in my undertaking, I am now venturing to lay before the critical public the results of my long and assiduous labours. The principal difficulties to be overcome were 1. To render the study of the language so easy as to make its acquisition mere play to the learner. 2. To enable the learner to make direct use of his knowledge with persons of any nationality, whether the language be universally accepted or not. In other words, the language is to be directly a means of international communication. 3. To find some means of overcoming the natural indifference of mankind, and disposing them in the quickest manner possible, and en masse, to learn and use the proposed language as a living one, and not only in last extremities, and with the key at hand. Amongst the numberless projects submitted at various times to the public, often under the high-sounding but unaccountable name of universal languages, no one has solved at once more than one of the above-mentioned problems, and even that but partially. Many other problems, of course, presented themselves, in addition to those here noticed, but these, as being of but secondary importance, I shall not in this place discuss. Before proceeding to enlighten the reader, as to the means employed for the solution of the problems, I would ask of him to reconsider the exact significance of each separately, so that he may not be inclined to carp at my methods of solution, merely because they may appear to him perhaps too simple. I do this 
because I am well aware that the majority of mankind feel disposed to bestow their consideration on any subject the more carefully, in proportion as it is enigmatical and incomprehensible. Such persons, at the sight of so short a grammar, with rules so simple and so readily intelligible, will be ready to regard it with a contemptuous glance, never considering the fact, of which a little further reflection would convince them, that this simplification and bringing of each detail out of its original complicated form into the simplest and easiest conceivable was, in fact, the most insuperable obstacle to be coped with. End of section zero. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 1 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. The first of the problems was solved in the following manner. A. I simplified the grammar to the utmost, and while on the one hand, I carried out my object in the spirit of the existing modern languages in order to make the study as free from difficulties as possible. On the other hand, I did not deprive it of clearness, exactness, and flexibility. My whole grammar can be learned perfectly in one hour. The immense alleviation given to the study of a language by such a grammar must be self-evident to everyone. B. I established rules for the formation of new words and at the same time reduced to a very small compass the list of words absolutely necessary to be learned without whoever depriving the language of the means of becoming a rich one. On the contrary, thanks to the possibility of forming from one root word any number of compounds expressive of every conceivable shade of idea, I made it the richest of the rich amongst modern tongues. This I accomplished by the introduction of numerous prefixes and suffixes, by whose aid the student is enabled to create new words for himself, without the necessity of having previously to learn them, e.g. 1. The prefix mal denotes the direct opposite of any idea. If, for instance, we know the word for good, bona, we can immediately form that for bad, malbona, and hence the necessity of a special word for bad is obviated. In like manner, alta, high, tall, malalta, low, short, estimi, to respect, malestimi, to despise, etc. Consequently, if one has learned this single word mal, he is relieved of learning a long string of words such as hard, premising that he knows soft, cold, old, dirty, distant, darkness, shame, to hate, etc., etc. 2. The suffix in marks the feminine gender, and thus if we know the word brother, frato, we can form sister, fratino, so also father, patro, mother, patrino. By this device words like grandmother, bride, girl, hen, cow, etc., are done away with. 3. The suffix il indicates an instrument for a given purpose, e.g. tranchi, to cut, trancillo, a knife. So words like comb, axe, bell, etc. are rendered unnecessary. In the same manner are employed many other affixes, some fifty in all, which the reader will find in the vocabulary at the end of this tractate. Moreover, as I have laid it down as a general rule that every word already regarded as international, the so-called foreign words, for example, undergoes no change in my language except such as may be necessary to bring it into conformity with the international orthography. Innumerable words become superfluous, e.g. locomotive, telegraph, nerve, temperature, centre, form, public, platinum, figure, wagon, comedy, and hundreds more. By the help of these rules and others, which will be found in the grammar, the language is rendered so exceedingly simple 
that the whole labour in learning consists in committing to memory some nine hundred words, which number includes all the grammatical inflections, prefixes, etc. With the assistance of the rules given in the grammar, any one of ordinary intellectual capacity may form for himself all the words, expressions, and idioms in ordinary use. Even these nine hundred words, as will be shown directly, are so chosen that the learning them offers no difficulty to a well-educated person. Thus the acquirement of this rich, mellifluous, universally comprehensible language is not a matter of years of laborious study, but the mere light amusement of a few days. End of section 1「This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 2 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. The solution of the second problem was effected thus. 1. I introduced a complete dismemberment of ideas into independent words, so that the whole language consists not of words in different states of grammatical inflection, but of unchangeable words. If the reader will turn to one of the pages of this book, written in my language, he will perceive that each word always retains its original unalterable form, namely, that under which it appears in the vocabulary. The various grammatical inflections, the reciprocal relations of the members of a sentence, are expressed by the junction of immutable syllables. But the structure of such a synthetic language, being altogether strange to the chief European nations, and consequently difficult for them to become accustomed to, I have adapted this principle of dismemberment to the spirit of the European languages, in such a manner that anyone learning my tongue from grammar alone, without having previously read this introduction, which is quite unnecessary for the learner, will never perceive that the structure of the language differs in any respect from that of his mother tongue. So, for example, the derivation of fratino, which is in reality a compound of frat, child of the same parents as oneself, in, female, o, an entity, that which exists, i.e., that which exists as a female child of the same parents as oneself, a sister, is explained by the grammar thus, the root for brother is frat, the termination of substantives in the nominative case is o, hence frato is equivalent of brother. The feminine gender is formed by the suffix in, hence fratino, sister. The little strokes between certain letters are added in accordance with a rule of the grammar, which requires their insertion between each component part of every complete word. Thus the learner experiences no difficulty, and never even imagines that what he calls terminations, suffixes, etc., are complete and independent words which always keep their own proper significations, whether placed at the beginning or end of a word, in the middle, or alone. The result of this construction of the language is that everything written in it can be immediately and perfectly understood by the help of the vocabulary, or even almost without it, by anyone who has not only not learnt the language before, but even has never heard of its very existence. Let me illustrate this by an example. I am amongst Englishmen, and have not the slightest knowledge of the English language. I am absolutely in need of making myself understood, and write in the international tongue may be as follows. Mi nescias kie mi lasis la bastonon, chu vi gin ne vidis. I hold out to one of the strangers an international to English vocabulary, and point to the title where the following sentence appears in large letters. Everything written in the international language can be translated by the help of this vocabulary. If several words together express but a single idea, they are written as one word, but separated by apostrophes, e.g. fratino, though a single idea 
is yet composed of three words which must be looked for separately in the vocabulary. If my companion has never heard of the international language, he will probably favour me at first with a vacant stare, will then take the paper offered to him, and searching for the words in the vocabulary, as directed, will make out something of this kind. Me equals I. Ne equals not. Stsias. Stsi equals no. As equals sign of the present tense. Stsias equals do no. Kie equals where. Me equals I. Lasis. Las equals leave. Is equals sign of the past tense. Lasis equals have left. La equals the. Bastonon. Baston equals stick. O equals sign of a substantive. N equals sign of the objective case. Bastonon stick. Chu equals whether, if, employed in questions. V equals you, thou. Jean. G equals it, this. N, sign of the objective case. Jean equals it. Ne equals not. Vidis. Vid equals C. Is equals sign of the past tense. Vidis equals have seen. And thus the Englishman will easily understand what it is I desire. If he wishes to reply, I show him an English international vocabulary, on which are printed these words. To express anything by means of this vocabulary, in the international language, look for the words required in the vocabulary itself and for the terminations necessary to distinguish the grammatical forms, look in the grammatical appendix, under the respective headings of the parts of speech which you desire to express. Since the explanation of the whole grammatical structure of the language is comprised in a few lines, as a glance at the grammar will show, the finding of the required terminations occupies no longer time than turning up a word in the dictionary. I would now direct the attention of my readers to another matter, at first sight a trifling one, but in truth of immense importance. Everyone knows the impossibility of communicating intelligibly with a foreigner by the aid of even the best of dictionaries, if one has no previous acquaintance with the language. In order to find any given word in a dictionary, we must know its derivation, for when words are arranged in sentences, Nearly every one of them undergoes some grammatical change. After this alteration, a word often bears not the least resemblance to its primary form, so that without knowing something of the language beforehand, we are able to find hardly any of the words occurring in a given phrase. And even those we do find will give no connected sense. Suppose, for example, I had written the simple sentence adduced above in German. Ich weiß nicht wo ich den Stock gelassen habe. Haben Sie ihn nicht gesehen? Anyone who did not speak or understand German, after searching for each word separately in a dictionary, would produce the following farrago of nonsense. I, white, not, where, I, stick, dispassionate, property, to have, she, they, you, not. I need scarcely point out that a lexicon of a modern language is usually a tome of a certain bulk, and the search for any number of words, one by one, is in itself a most laborious undertaking, not to speak of the different significations attaching to the same word, amongst which there is but a bare possibility of the student selecting the right one. The international vocabulary, owing to the highly synthetic structure of the language, is a mere leaflet, which one might carry in one's notebook or the waistcoat pocket. Granted that we had a language 
with a grammar simplified to the utmost, and whose every word had a definite fixed meaning, the person addressed would require not only to have beforehand some knowledge of the grammar, to be able, even with the vocabulary at hand, to understand anything addressed to him, but would also need some previous acquaintance with the vocabulary itself, in order to be able to distinguish between the primitive word and its grammatically altered derivatives. The utility, again, of such a language would wholly depend upon the number of its adepts, for when sitting, for instance, in a railway carriage, and wishing to ask a fellow traveller, how long do we stop at, it is scarcely to be expected that he will undertake to learn the grammar of the language before replying. By using, on the other hand, the international language, we are set in possibility of communicating directly with a person of any nationality, even though he may never have heard of the existence of the language before. Anything whatever written in the international tongue can be translated without difficulty by means of the vocabulary alone, no previous study being requisite. The reader may easily convince himself of the truth of this assertion by experimenting for himself with the specimens of the language appended to this pamphlet. A person of good education will seldom need to refer to the vocabulary, a linguist scarcely at all. Let us suppose that you have to write to a Spaniard, who neither knows your language nor you his. You think that probably he has never heard of the international tongue. No matter. Write boldly to him in that language, and be sure he will understand you perfectly, the complete vocabulary required for everyday use, being but a single sheet of paper, can be bought for a few pence, in any language you please, easily enclosed in the smallest envelope, and forwarded with your letter. The person to whom it is addressed will without doubt understand what you have written, the vocabulary being not only a clue to, but a complete explanation of your letter. The wonderful power of combination possessed by the words of the international language renders this Lilliputian lexicon amply sufficient for the expression of every want of daily life. But words seldom met with, technical terms, and foreign words familiar to all nations as tobacco, theatre, fabric, etc., are not included in it. If such words, therefore, are needed, and it is impossible to express them by some equivalent terms, the larger vocabulary must be consulted. 2. It has now been shown how, by means of the peculiar structure of the international tongue, any one may enter into an intelligible correspondence with another person of a different nationality. The sole drawback, until the language becomes more widely known, is the necessity under which the writer is placed of waiting until the person addressed shall have analysed his thoughts. In order to remove this obstacle, as far as practicable, at least for persons of education, recourse was had to the following expedient. Such words as are common to the languages of all civilised peoples, together with the so-called foreign words and technical terms, were left unaltered. If a word has a different sound in different languages, that sound has been chosen which is common to at least two or three of the most important European tongues, or which, if found in one language only, has become familiar to other nations. When the required word has a different sound in every language, some word was sought, for, having only a relative likeness in meaning to the other, or one which, though seldom used, is yet well known to the leading nations, e.g. the word for near is different in every European language. But if one considers for a moment the word proximus, nearest, it will be noticed that some modified form of the word is in use in all important tongues. If then I call near proxim, the meaning will be apparent to every educated man. In other emergencies, words were drawn from the Latin, as being a quasi-international language. Deviations from these rules were only made in exceptional cases, as for the avoidance of homonyms, simplicity of orthography, etc. In this manner, being in communication with a European of fair education who has never learnt the international tongue, one may make sure of being immediately understood, without the person addressed having to refer continually to the vocabulary. 
in order that the reader may prove for himself the truth of all that has been set forth above, a few specimens of the international language are subjoined. End of section 2 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 3 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. Patronia. Patronia, chiu estas en la cielo, sancta estu via nomo. Venu regezzo via, estu volo via, ciel en la cielo, tiel ancao sur la terro. Panon nian ciu tagan donu al ni hodiao, cae pardonu al ni schuldoin niain, ciel nian cao pardonas al niai schuldantoi. Ne conducu nin en tenton, Sed liberigu nin della malvera. Char via estas la regado, la forto, cae la gloro eterne. Amen. Ella Biblio. Iela commenso, Dio creis la terron, cae la cielon, cae la terro, Esti sen forma, cae deserta, cae malumo, esti super la profundajo, cae la animo de Dio, sin portis super la acvo. Cae Dio diris, estu lumo, cae farigis lumo, cae Dio vidis la lumon, que gi estas bona. Cae nomis Dio la lumon tago, cae la mal lumon li nomis nocto. Cae estis vespero, cae estis mateno, unu tago. Cae Dio diris, estu firmajo inter la acvo, cae gi apartigu acvon de acvo. Cae Dio creis la firmajon, Cae apartigis la acvon qui esta sub la firmajo, cae farigis tiel, cae Dio nomis la firmajon cielo, cae estis vespero, cae estis mateno, la dua tago, cae Dio diris, collectus sin la acvo de sub la cielo, unu locon, cae montrus sin secajo, cae farigis tiel. Cae Dio nomis la secajo en terro, cae la collectoin de la acvoli nomis marroi. Letero Cara amico, mi presentas al mi, quian visagion vi faros, pos la ricevo de mia letero. Vi rigardos la subscribon, cae ec crios. Ciu li perdis la saggion? Ie cia lingvo li scribis? Cion signifas la folieto, Ciun li aldonis al sia letero? Tranquilliciu, mia cara, Mia saggio, Ciel mi almenau credas, Estas tutte en orto. Mi legis antau quelcae tagoi, Li breton, sub la nomo, lingvo, Internazia. La autoro credigas que per tiu lingvo oni povas esti comprenata de la tuta mondo, se ec la adresito ne sole ne scias la lingvon, sed ec ancao ne audis prici. Oni devas sole aldoni alla letero mal grandan folieton nomatan Vortaro. Desirante vidi, ciu tio estas vera, mi scribas al vi en tiu lingvo, cae mi ec unu vorton ne almetas en alia lingvo. Tiel, ciel, se ni tutte ne comprenus, unu la lingvon de la alia. Respondu al mi, 
Ĉu vi efektive komprenis kion mi skribis? Se la afero proponita de la aŭtoro estas efektive bona, oni devas per ĉiuj fortoj lin helpi. Kiam mi havos vian respondon, mi sendos al vi la libreton. Montru ĝin al ĉiuj loĝantoj de via urbeto. Sendu ĝin ĉiun vilaĝon ĉirkaŭ la urbeto, ĉiun urbon kaj urbeton, kie vi nur havas amikojn aŭ konatojn. Estas necese, ke grandega nombro da personoj donu sian voĉon. Tiam post la plej mallonga tempo estos dedicita afero, kiu povas porti grandegan utilon al la homa societo. Mia penso. Sur la campo for de la mondo, antaŭ nocto de somero, amikino en la rondo, cantas canton pri l'espero, cae pri vivo detruita, si racontas compatante, mia vundo refrapita, min dolores resangante, ciu vi dormas, ho oh signoro, chi altia sen movezzo, ha credeble rememoro, el la cara infanezzo, chi on diri, ne ploranta, povis esti parolado, con fraulino riposanta, possomera promenado, mia penso cae tormento, cae doloroi cae esperoi, Kion de mi en silento al vi iris jam oferoi, kion havis mi plecaran, la junetson mi ploranta, metis mem sur la altaron de la devo ordonanta, fairon sentas mi interne, vivi ancao mi desiras, io pelas mi eterne, se mi al gaiuloi iras, se ne placas alla sorto, mia peno cae laboro, venu toi al mi la morto, en espero sen doloro. El Haine En sonjo prinsinon mi vidis, cun vangoi mal secoi de ploro, sub arbo sub verda ni sidis, tenantes in corro ce corro, de la patro de le via la crono, por mi gine estas havinda, For, for, lia sceptro cae trono, vin mem mi desiras aminda. Ne eble scial mi rediras, en tombo mi estas tenata. Mi nur en la noctu eliras, al vi mi es sole amata. Ho, mia cor! Ho, mia cor! Ne batu mal tranquile, el mio brusto nun ne saltu for. Iam teni min, ne povas mi facile, ho oh, mia cor. Ho oh, mia cor, pos longa laborado, ciu mi ne venco sen decida hor. Suffice, tranquilliciu de la batado, ho oh, mia cor. End of section 3I have shown the advantages to be derived from a study of it, and have proved that its ultimate success is altogether independent of the opinions that may be formed as to its right to the title international. For even should the language never come into general use, it gives to everyone who has learned it the possibility of being understood by foreigners if only they are able to read and write. But my tongue has yet another object, not content with internationality, it aims at universality, and aspires to be spoken by the majority of educated people. 
To count on the aid of the public in a scheme of this nature would indeed be to build on a tottering, nay, rather an imaginary foundation. The larger part of the public does not care to aid anyone. It prefers to have its wishes gratified without inconvenience to itself. On this account, I made my best endeavour to discover some means of accomplishing my object, independently of the help of the public. One of my plans, of which I shall now speak more at large, is a kind of universal vote. If the reader consider all that has been said above, he must come to the conclusion that the study of the international language is practically useful, and completely remunerates the learner for the small amount of trouble he has to expend on it. For my own part, I am naturally wishful that the whole of mankind should take up my language, but I had rather be prepared for the worst, than form two sanguine anticipations. I suppose, therefore, that, just at first, very few will consider my language worth the learning, so far as practical usefulness is concerned, and for abstract principles no one will lose even a single hour. Most of my readers will either pay not the slightest attention to my proposition, or, doubting whether the language be of any use, never screw up the courage to the sticking point of learning it, fearing that they may be dubbed dreamers, a sobriquet dreaded by most people more than fire. What then is to be done, to dispose this mass of indifferent and undecided beings to master the international language? Could we in imagination look for a moment into the mind of each of these indifferent ones, we should find their thoughts to be taking somewhat of the following form. In principle, no one has anything to oppose to the introduction of an international dialect. On the contrary, all would give it their fullest approval, but each wishes to see the greater part of the civilized world able to speak the language and himself able to comprehend it, without any preliminary wearisome bitterness of learning on his own part. Then, of course, even the most indifferent would set to work, because to shirk the small amount of labour necessary for learning a language possessed of such valuable qualities, and above all considered the thing, by all the educated, would be regarded as simple stupidity. In order to supply a language ready for immediate use, without any one having to initiate the study, and to see on every hand people either already proficient in the tongue, or having promised to take it up, we must proceed somewhat in the following manner. Doubtless this little book will be scattered through various countries, and fall into the hands of various readers. I do not ask any of my readers to spend time, labour, or money on the subject now brought to their notice. I merely beg of you, the present reader of the pamphlet, to take up your pen for a moment, fill in one of the appended promessoi below, and send it to me, Dr. Esperanto, C.O., Dr. L. Zamenhof, Warsaw, Poland. The promesso is to this effect. I, the undersigned, promise to learn the international language proposed by Dr. Esperanto. If it shall be shown, that ten million promises have been publicly given. If you have any objections to make to the present form of the language, strike out the words of the promise and write contrao, against, beneath them. If you undertake to learn the language unconditionally, i.e., without reference to the number of other students, write out the latter words of the promesso and write sen condice, unconditionally. On the back of the promise, write name and address. The signing of this promise lays no obligations upon the person signing, and does not bind him to the smallest sacrifice or work. It merely puts him under an obligation to study the language when ten million other persons shall be doing the same. When that time arrives, there will be no talking about sacrifice. Everyone will be ready to study the language without having signed any promises. On the other hand, Every person signing one of these promessoi will, without any greater inconvenience to himself than dipping a pen in ink, be hastening on the realization of the traditional ideal of mankind, the universal language. When the number of promises has reached ten millions, a list of the names of those who have signed will be published, and with it 
the question of an international language decided. Nothing actually prevents people from inducing their friends and acquaintances to sign a promise in any cause, yet how few, as a fact, ever do sign anything, be the object ever so important and advantageous to mankind, more especially when, as in the present instance, the act of signing, while contributing to the realization of a sublime ideal, at the same time requires no moral nor material sacrifice can one see no very clear grounds for a refusal. Doubtless no one has anything to say, in general, against the introduction of an international language. But, if any one does not approve of the present form of the language, by all means let him send me, instead of his promise, his protest. For it is manifestly the duty of every person able to read and write, of every age, sex, or profession, to give his opinion in this great undertaking, the more so as it requires no greater sacrifice than that of a few moments for filling in the promise, and a few pence for sending it to me. I would here beg of all editors of newspapers and magazines to make known the cause to their readers, and at the same time I would request my readers to mention the subject to all their friends. I need not say any more. I am not so conceited as to suppose that my language is so perfect as to be incapable of improvement, but I make bold to think that I have satisfied all the conditions required in a language claiming to be styled international. It is only after having solved successfully all the problems I had proposed to myself, concerning the more important of which, only, I have been able to speak above, owing to the small compass of this pamphlet, and after many years spent in a careful study of the subject that I venture to appear in public. I am but human. I may have erred. I may have committed unpardonable faults. I may even have omitted to give to my language the very thing most important to it. For these reasons, before printing complete vocabularies and bringing out books and magazines, I lay my work before the public for the space of one year, addressing myself to the whole intelligent world with the earnest request to send me opinions on the proposed international language. I invite everyone to communicate with me as to the changes, corrections, etc., which he deems advisable. All such observations sent to me I will gratefully make use of, if they appear really advantageous, and at the same time not subversive of the fundamental principles of the structure of the language that is to say, simplicity and adaptability to international communication, whether adopted universally or not. At the end of the allotted time, an abstract of the proposed changes will be published, and the language will receive its final form. But if, even then, anyone should find the language not altogether satisfactory to himself, he should not forget that the language is by no means proof against all further changes, only that the right of alteration will be no longer the author's personal privilege, but that of an academy of the tongue. It is no easy task to invent an international language, but it is a still less easy one to persuade the public to make use of it. Hence, it is of the utmost importance that every possible effort be made for its furtherance. When the form of the language has been decided, and the language itself has come into general use, a special academy can introduce, gradually and imperceptibly, all necessary changes, even should the result be a total alteration of the form of the language. On this account, I would pray those of my readers, who may be, for whatever reasons, dissatisfied with my language, to send in their protests, only in the event of their having serious cause for it, such as the finding in the language objectionable features unalterable in the future. This little work, which has cost much labour and health, I now commend to the kindly attention of the public, hoping that all to whom the public weal is dear will aid me to the best of their ability. Circumstances will show each one in what way he can be of use, I will only direct the attention of all friends of the international language to that most important object, towards which all eyes must be turned, the success of the voting, 
Let each do what he can, and in a short time we shall have that which men have been dreaming of so long, a universal tongue. Nota bene. The author requests his reader to fill in one of the promises on the following page, and send it to him, and to distribute the others amongst friends and acquaintances for the same purpose. Author's Address Dr. Esperanto, CEO, Dr. L. Zamenhof, Warsaw, Russia, Poland. Promesso. Mi, subscribita, promesas el lerni la proponitan de doctoro Esperanto, lingvon internacian, se estos montrita que dec milionoid personoi donis publique dian saman promeson. Subscribo. Nomo. Adreso. End of section 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 5 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. Complete Grammar of the International Language. A. The Alphabet. Ah. Ah, as in lost. Bo. B, as in B. Tso. Ts, as in wits. Cho. Ch, as in church. Do. D, as in do. E. E, as in make. For. F, as in fly. Go, g, as in gun. Jaw, j, as in join. Ho, h, as in half. Ho, strongly aspirated h. Ch, as in loch, scotch. E, e, as in marine. Yaw, y, as in yoke. Jaw, j, as in azure. Co, k, as in key. Law, l, as in line. Ma, m, as in make. Nor, n, as in now. O, o, as in naught. Po, p, as in pair. Ro, r, as in rare. So, s, as in see. Sho, sh, as in show. To, t, as in tea. O, u, as in bull. Wo, w, as in mount. Vo, v, as in very. Zo, z, as in zeal. If it be found impracticable to print works with the diacritic signs, the circumflex and the breve, the letter H may be substituted for the sign circumflex, and the breve sign may be altogether omitted. But at the beginning of work so printed, there should be this note, note bene, ch equals cho, gh equals jo, hh equals ho, jh equals jo, sh equals sho. When it is necessary to make use of the internal sign, the small comma, 
care should be taken that it cannot be mistaken for a comma. Instead of small comma may be printed apostrophe or dash, e.g. signeto with the small commas, signeto with apostrophes, or signeto with dashes. End of section 5「there is no indefinite and only one definite article, la, for all genders, numbers, and cases. 2. Substantives are formed by adding o to the root. For the plural, the letter yo must be added to the singular. There are two cases, the nominative and the objective, accusative. The root with the added o is the nominative. The objective adds an n after the o. Other cases are formed by prepositions. Thus the possessive genitive by de, of. The dative by al, to. The instrumental ablative by kun, with. Or other preposition as the sense demands, e.g. root, patr, father, la patro, the father, patron, father, objective, de la patro, of the father, al la patro, to the father, con la patro, with the father, la patroi, the fathers, la patroin, the father's objective, por la patroi, for the fathers. 3. Adjectives are formed by adding a to the root. The numbers and cases are the same as in substantives. The comparative degree is formed by prefixing pli, more. The superlative by play, most. The word than is rendered by ol, e.g. pli blanca ol neggio, whiter than snow. 4. The cardinal numbers do not change their forms for the different cases. They are 1. Uno 2. Du 3. Tri 4. Kvar 5. Kvin 6. Ses 7. Sep, eight, ok, nine, now, ten, dek, a hundred, cent, thousand, mil. The tens and hundreds are formed by simple junction of the numerals, e.g., five hundred thirty-three, kvincent. Tri dec tri. Ordinals are formed by adding the adjectival a to the cardinals, e.g., unua, first, dua, second, etc. Multiplicatives as threefold, fourfold, etc. add obl, e.g., triobla, threefold. Fractionals add on, as duono, a half, quarono, a quarter. Collective numerals add op, as quarope, four together. Distributives prefix po, e.g. poquin, five apiece. Adverbials take e, e.g. unue. Firstly, etc. 
5. The personal pronouns are me, I, V, thou, you, Li, he, she, she, G, it, C, self, Ni, we, Ili, they, Oni, one, people, French on. Possessive pronouns are formed by suffixing to the required personal the adjectival termination. The declension of the pronouns is identical with that of substantives, e.g. me, I, mean, me, object, mia, my, mine. 6. The verb does not change its form for numbers or persons, e.g. mi farras, I do, la patro farras, the father does, ili farras, they do. Forms of the verb. A. The present tense ends in as, e.g. mi farras, I do. B. The past tense ends in is, e.g. li faris, he did. C. The future tense ends in os, e.g. ili faros, they will do. Cho. The subjunctive mood ends in us, e.g. she farus, she may do. D. The imperative mood ends in u, e.g. ni faru, let us do. E. The infinitive mood ends in e, e.g. fari, to do. There are two forms of the participle in the international language the changeable or adjectival, and the unchangeable or adverbial. F. The present participle active ends in ant, e.g. faranta, he who is doing, farante, doing. G. The past participle ends in int, e.g. farinta, he who has done, farinte, having done. Jo, the future participle, ends in ont, e.g. faronta, he who will do, faronte, about to do. H. The present participle passive ends in at, e.g. farate, being done. H. The past participle passive ends in it, e.g. farita. That which has been done, farite, having been done. I, the future participle passive, ends in ot, e.g. farota, that which will be done, farote, about to be done. All forms of the passive are rendered by the respective forms of the verb est, to be, and the present participle passive of the required verb. The preposition used is de, by, e.g. She estas amata de ciui. She is loved by everyone. 7. Adverbs are formed by adding e to the root. The degrees of comparison are the same as in adjectives, e.g. Mia frato cantas pli bone Ol mi, my brother, sings better than I. 8. All prepositions govern the nominative case. End of section 6. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 7 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. C. General Rules. 1. 
Every word is to be read exactly as written. There are no silent letters. 2. The accent falls on the last syllable but one, penultimate. 3. Compound words are formed by the simple junction of roots, the principal word standing last, which are written as a single word, but in elementary works separated by a small line or apostrophe. Grammatical terminations are considered as independent words, e.g. vapor shippo, steamboat, is composed of the words vapor, steam, and sheep, a boat, with the substantival termination o. 4. If there be one negative in a clause, a second is not admissible. 5. In phrases answering the question where, meaning direction, the words take the termination of the objective case, e.g. kien vi iras, where are you going, domon, home, londonon, to London, etc. 6. Every preposition in the international language has a definite fixed meaning, if it be necessary to employ some preposition, and it is not quite evident from the sense which it should be, the word ye is used, which has no definite meaning. For example, joi ye tio, to rejoice over it, ridi ye tio, to laugh at it, enuo ye la patrullo, a longing for one's fatherland. In every language, different prepositions, sanctioned by usage, are employed in these dubious cases. In the international language, one word, ye, suffices for all. Instead of ye, the objective, without a preposition, may be used, when no confusion is to be feared. 7. The so-called foreign words i.e., words which the greater number of languages have derived from the same source undergo no change in the international language, beyond conforming to its system of orthography. Such is the rule with regard to primary words. Derivatives are better formed from the primary word according to the rules of the international grammar, e.g., teatro, theatre, but teatra, Theatrical, not theatricala, etc. 8. The a ah of the article and the final o oh of substantives may be sometimes dropped euphoniae gratia, e.g. del mondo, for del mondo, schiller, for schillero. In such cases, an apostrophe should be substituted for the discarded vowel. End of section 7。This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 8 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. Dr. Esperanto's International to English Vocabulary. Vortaro por Angloi. Everything written in the international language can be translated by means of this vocabulary. If several words are required to express one idea, they must be written in one but separated by apostrophes, e.g. fratino, though one idea is yet composed of three words, which must be looked for separately in the vocabulary. A, a, expresses an adjective, e.g. hom, man, homa, human. Acid, sour, acid. 
Achet, to buy. Ad, indicates the duration of an action, e.g. ir, go, irad, to walk, dance, a dance, danzad, dancing. Adiyao, adieu, goodbye. Aer, the air. Affair, affair, business. Agle, the eagle. Agrable, agreeable. Aj, the age. Ein, ever. E.g. Kiu, who. Kiu ein, whoever. Aj indicates a thing having some quality or peculiarity, or made of some particular thing, e.g. malnov, old, malnovage, old things, fruct, fruit, fructage, made of fruits. Accompan, to accompany. Acre, sharp. Acv, water. Al, to, e.g. Ali, to him, indicates also the dative. Ali, other. Almenau, at least. Alt, high, tall. Alumet, a match. Am, to love, like. Amas, a crowd. Mass. Amik. Friend. An. A member, an inhabitant, an adherent. E.g. Regn. State, kingdom, empire. Regnan. Inhabitant of an empire, etc. Parisan. A Parisian. Angul. An angle, a corner. Angel, an angel. Anim, the soul. Ankau, also, too. Ankorau, still, yet. Anstatau, instead of. Ant, indicates the present participle active. Antau, before. Apart, separate. Aparten, to belong. Apenau, scarcely, hardly. Apud, near, nigh to. Ar, indicates a collection of objects, e.g. Arb, a tree. Arbar, a forest. Stup, step, stair. Stupar, Staircase, stairs, ladder. Arb, a tree. Argent, silver. As, indicates the present in verbs. At, indicates the present participle passive. Attend, to wait for, expect. Ow, or either. Aud, to hear. Auskult, listen to. Autun, autumn. Av, grandfather. Avar, avaricious. Azen, an ass, a donkey. Bo, babil. To prate, to chatter, to prattle. Buck, to bake. Bala, to sweep. Balance, to nod, swing, sway. Baldau, soon. Bun, to bathe. Bapt. Baptize. Bar. 
to bar a door, to stop a passage. Barb, the beard. Barrel, barrel, casket. Baston, stick. Bat, to beat, to flog. Batal, to fight, to struggle. Bedaur, to pity, to regret, to repent. Bel, beautiful, handsome. Ben, to bless, consecrate, hallow. Benk, a bench. Best, an animal, a beast. Bezon, to want. Bier, beer. Bind, to bind. Beard, a bird. Blank, white. Blow, to blow. Blue, blue. Ball, relation by marriage, own or other peoples. E.g., patr, father. Bopatr, father-in-law. Frat, brother. Bofrat, brother-in-law. Boy, to bark. Bol, to boil. Bon, good. Bord, the shore of the sea, the bank or side of a river. Bot, a boot. Botel, a bottle. Bov, an ox. Branch, a branch. Brand, brandy. Bril, to shine, to sparkle, to glitter. Bros, a brush. Brew, to make a noise, to bawl. Brul, to burn oneself. Brust, the breast, bosom. Brute, brute. Bush, the mouth. Buter, butter. Buton, a button. Tso, tsel, to aim. Tsent, a hundred. Tsert, certain, sure, known. Tseter, the remainder, the following, rest. Cigar, a cigar. Cigarette, a cigarette. Citron, a lemon, citron. Cho, chagrin, to grieve, to vex. Chambre, a chamber, a room. Chap, a cap, a bonnet. Chapel, a hat. Char, because. Che, near, by, at, beside. Chemise, a shirt, a chemise. Chen, a chain. Cherries, a cherry. Cherk, a coffin. Ches, to cease, to leave off. Cheval, a horse. Chi, the nearest person, thing, etc. E.g., tiu, that one. Tiu chi, this one. Tie, there. Tie chi, here. Chia, every. Chiam. Always, ever. Chie, everywhere. Chiel, heaven, heavens, sky. Chio, all, everything. Chirkau, around, roundabout.
Chiyu, everyone, Chia, added to the first two to five letters of a masculine proper name, makes it a diminutive, caressing, e.g. Michael, Michio, Alexander, Alecio, Chu, or, if, is employed in questions, e.g. Minestias chuvi amas. I don't know if you love. Do. Da. Supplies the genitive. After words expressing measure, weight, etc. E.g. Kilogramo da viando. A kilo of meat. Glasso da teo. A cup of tea. Dance, to dance. Danger, danger. Dank, to thank. Daur, to endure, to last. De, from, of, supplies also the genitive. Decide, to decide. Defend, to defend. Dec, ten. Dextr, right. Demand, to ask. Dense, dense, thick. Dent, a tooth. Detru, to demolish, to destroy, to ruin. Dev, must, ought, to be obliged. Desert, a desert, a wilderness. Desir, to desire. D, God. Dik, big, thick, stout. Diligent, diligence, assiduity. Dimanche, Sunday. Dir, to tell, to say. Dis, asunder, into parts, e.g. shear, to pull, dis shear, to pull asunder. Dispute, to contend for, to quarrel, to dispute. Divide, to divide. Dolch, sweet. Dolor, ache, pain, affliction. Dom, House, don, to give, donats, to make a present of, dorm, to sleep, dors, the back, do, to, doom, while, whilst, e, e. The ending of adverbs, e.g., bone, well, eben, even, smooth, eble, possible, ets, indicates abstract ideas, e.g., bon, good, bonets, goodness, infan, child, infanets. Childhood. Etch. Even. Adverb also. Eduk. To educate. Eds. The husband. Effective. Real. Effective. Egg. Indicates enlargement or intensity of degree. E.g. Man. Hand. Maneg. Paw. Varm, warm. Varmeg, hot. Egal, equal, like. A indicates the place of an action, etc. E.g., queer, to cook. Queere, kitchen. Prej, to pray. Prejay, the church. 
ek indicates the beginning or the short duration of an action, e.g. kant, to sing, ek kant, to begin to sing, kri, to cry, ek kri, to cry out, to exclaim. X, formerly, placed before an official or professional designation, shows that a person has given up his office or profession. Exter, on the outside of, outwardly, without, out of. Exemple, example. El, from, out of. Elect, to choose, to elect. M. Inclined, disposed, accustomed. N. In. Enu. To be weary, annoyed. Envy. To envy. Er. Indicates a thing taken as a separate unity, e.g. sable, sand, sabler, a grain of sand. Errar. To err, to be wrong, to be mistaken. Escept, to exclude, to accept. Esper, to hope. Esprime, to express, to declare by words. Est, to be. Esteem, to esteem, to prize. Esting, to extinguish. Estr, the chief, the superior. Et, indicates diminution or decrease, e.g. read, to laugh, ridet, to smile, mur, a wall, muret, a little wall, chamber wall. Etaj, a floor, a story, etern, eternal. Fo. Fazil, light, easy. Faden, thread. Fife, to pipe, to whistle. Fire, fire. Fall, to fall. Fald, to fold. Family, family. Far, to do, to make, to act. Farij, to become, to turn, to grow. Fart, to live, to be, well or ill. Felic, happy. Fend, to split, to chop. Fenestre, window. Fer, Iron. Ferm. To shut. Fest. To feast. To hold a feast. Fianch. One who is betrothed. The bridegroom. Fidel. Faithful. True. Fier. Proud. Haughty. Feel. A son. Fien. To finish. Finger, a finger. Firm, firm, solid. Fish, a fish. Flank, side, flank. Flar, to smell. Flav, yellow. Flor, flower. Flu, to flow. Flug, to fly, fluid, liquid, fluid, foi, times, e.g. four times, foin, hay, foli, a leaf, of a tree, a sheet of paper, etc. Fond, to found, establish, font, a fountain, for, away. Forges, to forget. Forge, to forge. Fork, a fork. 
forn a stove fort strong vigorous fos to dig frap to hit to beat frat brother fraul bachelor single man fresh fresh fromage cheese frost frost coldness frot to rub fru early fruct fruit front forehead fulm lightning foom the smoke fund the bottom end of section 8This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 9 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. Go. Guy. Gay. Gain. To win to gain gant a glove guard to guard to keep gust guest ge of both sexes e g patr father ge patroi parents master master ge mastroi both the master and the mistress of the house genu ni glatsi ice glass a glass cup glat smooth even glove sword gleet to slide to glide along on ice glor to glorify glute to swallow gorge throat grand great grass fat grease grat scratch gratul to congratulate grav grave important grease gray Gust, taste. Gut, to drop. Guto, a drop. Jo, jarden, a garden. Gem, to groan. Gentil, genteel. G, it. Gis, to, till, up to. Joy, to rejoice, to be glad. Ho, ha, ha, ah. Hail, the hail. Halads, bad exhalation. Halt, to stop, to make a stay. Har, a hare. A ring, a herring. Hout, skin, hide. Have, to have. Hate, to heat, to make a fire. Help, to help, to aid. Herb, herb, grass. Hered, to inherit. Hierau, yesterday. Ho, o. Hodiau, today. Hom, man, human beings in general. Honest, honest. Hunt, shame. 
Hor, an hour. Horloge, a clock. Hotel, in, hotel. Humil, humble. Hund, dog. E, e, indicates the infinitive in verbs, e.g. Laudi, to praise. Ia, some. Ial, by whatever cause. Iam, sometime. Eid, child, descendant, e.g. Bov, ox. Bovid, calf. Ie, somewhere. Iel, in some manner. Ies, someone's. Eeg, to cause anything to be in a certain state, e.g. pur, pure, clean, purig, to purify, to cleanse, brul, to burn oneself, brulig, to burn someone, something, seed, to sit, sidig, to seat, eej, to become, to turn, to compel oneself, e.g. pal, pale, palij, to turn pale, seed, to sit, sidij, to seat oneself, eel, an instrument for a given purpose, e.g. tond, to shear, tondil, scissors, paf, to shoot, pafil, a gun, a musket, a firelock. Ili, they. In, indicates the feminine, e.g. patr, father, patrin, mother, cock, cock, coquin, a hen. Ind, worthy. Infan, child. Ing, a thing into which something else is put, a holder, e.g. candel, a taper, a candle. Candeling, a candlestick. Ink, ink. Instru, to teach. Insul, island. Insult. To insult, to outrage. Int indicates the past participle, active. Intense, to intend. Inter, between. Intern, inwardly, internally. Invite, to invite. Io, somewhat, something. Iom. Any, some, ir, to go. Is, indicates the past in verbs. Ist, occupied with, e.g. bot, boot, shoe. Botist, shoemaker. Mar, sea. Marist, a seaman, a sailor. It, indicates the past participle. Passive. Eu, someone. Yo. Oi, indicates the plural. Ya, however, nevertheless. Yam, already. Yar, year. Ye, may be translated by various prepositions. Its signification depends on the general sense of the phrase. Yen, there, here. Yes, yes. You, des, the, the. Huge, to judge. Yun, young. Used, 
just, equitable. Jo. Jaud, Thursday. Jet, to throw, to cast. Jour, to swear. End of section nine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 10 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Vocabulary. Co. Cough. Coffee. Kai and Kayer stitched book of writing paper, a copy book in schools. Caldron kettle, cauldron. Kalesh cab, a light carriage. Kalkul to count, to reckon. Kamen chimney, fireplace. Kamp a field. Canap, a sofa. Candel, a candle. Cant, to sing. Cup, head. Cupped, to seize, to catch. Car, deer. Carb, coal. Caress, to caress. Kash, to hide, to conceal. Kat, a cat. Cows, to cause, to occasion. Ke, that, conjunction. Kelk, some, certain. Kest, box, chest. Kia, what, e.g. Kia homo, what man, Kia tago. What day? Kial, why, wherefore? Kiam, when? Kie, where? Kiel, how? Kies, whose? E.g. Kies libro, whose book? Kio, what, that which? Kiom, how much? How many? Kis, to kiss. Kiu, who? Klar, clear. Knab, boy, lad. Kok, cock. Kol, neck. Koleg, a colleague. Collect, to collect, to gather. Koler, to be angry. Colon, column, pillar. Color, a color. Comb, to comb. Commence, to begin. Commerce, to trade, to traffic. Combat, to compassion, to bear with. Compren, to understand, to conceive. Con, to know. Condich, condition. Conduc, to conduct, to lead. Confess, to avow, confess. Consent, to consent. Conserve, to preserve, to keep. Conceal, to counsel, to advise. Console, to console, to comfort. Constant, constant. Steadfast. Construe. To construct. To build. Content. Content. Satisfied. Contrao. Against. Conven. To suit. To agree. Cor. The heart. Corn. A horn. Corp. The body. Cort. 
the court, courtyard, cost, to cost, covr, to cover, crutch, to spit, crayon, a pencil, a crayon, cravat, a cravat, neckcloth, cre, to create, cred, to believe, cresc, to grow, to wax, Crete, chalk, cri, to cry, cron, a crown, a garland, cruz, a cross, cudr, to sew, guir, to cook, culer, a spoon, culp, culpable, guilty, kun, with, kune, together, kupr, copper, kur, to run, kuratz, to cure, heal, kuraj, courageous, resolute, bold, kurten, curtain, kusen, a cushion, kush, to lie, e.g. in bed, kutim, to accustom oneself to. Kuz, a cousin. Kvankam, though, although. Kvar, four. Kvin, five. Lo, l, the. La, the. Labor, to labor, to work. Lutz, weary, tired. Lucked, milk. Lam, lame. Lump, lamp. Land, land, country. Lang, the tongue. Lantern, a lantern. Large, large, broad. Larm, a tear. Las, to let, to permit, to allow, to leave. Last, last, latest. Lau, in conformity with, conformably, according to. Loud, to praise, to commend. Lout, aloud, loudly. Love, to wash. Lezion, a lesson. Leg, to read. Ledge, law. Leon, a lion. Lern, to learn. Lert, dexterous, skillful. Letter, letter, epistle. Lev, to lift up, to raise. Li, he. Liber, free. Libre, book. Ligue, to bind. Ligne, wood. Lingve, speech, language, tongue. Leap, lip. Lit, bed. Liter, a letter of the alphabet, a type. Lodge, to dwell, to lodge. Look, place, spot. Long, long. Lude, to play. Loom, to light, to shine. Loon, the moon. Lund, Monday. Mo, much, to chew. Magazen, store, a shop. Makul, a spot, a speck. Mal indicates opposites, e.g. bon, good, malbon, bad, esteem, to esteem, malesteem, to despise, to disdain. Malgrau, in spite of, notwithstanding. Man, hand. Manj, to eat. Mar, the sea. 
Mard Tuesday Mastre Master Maten The morning Matur Ripe, mature Mem Self Memor To remember, to keep in mind Merit To merit, to deserve Mercred Wednesday Met To put Mez The middle Mesur To measure Mi I Mix To mix, to mingle Mil Thousand Milit War Mir To be astonished, to wonder Miser Misery Poverty, wretchedness. Moder, moderate, temperate. Modest, modest. Mol, soft, tender. Mon, money. Monat, month. Mond, world. Mont, mountain. Montre, to show. Mord, to bite. Morgau, tomorrow. Mort, to die. Mosht, highness, majesty, etc., is generally added to titles, e.g., via regia moshto, your royal majesty, via generala moshto, via episcopa moshto, etc. Mov, to move, to stir up. Mult, much. Mur, wall. Murmur, to murmur. Mush, a fly. No. On, indicates the objective, accusative case, also direction, e.g. Mi iras domon, I am going home. Nudge, to swim. Naibar, neighbor. Nask, to bear a child, to bring forth, to give birth to. Now, nine. Naz, nose. Ne, no, not. Nebul, mist, fog. Neces, indispensable, necessary. Nej, snow. Nick, Nick, neither nor. Nenia, not any. Neniam, never. Nenie, nowhere. Neniel, by no means, in no wise. Nenies, nobody's. Nenio, nothing. Neniu, nobody, no one. Nep. Grandchild, Nev, a nephew, Ni, we, Nigr, black, Nyo, added to the first two to five letters of a feminine proper name makes it a diminutive, caressing, e.g., Marie, Magno, Emily, Emigno, Noble, Noble, Noct, Night, Nom, Name, nombre, number, nov, new, noob, cloud, nude, naked, nux, nut, noon, now, nur, only, nutr, to nourish, to nurse a child, o. O indicates a substantive, noun. Obe, to obey. Object, an object. Oble, indicates a numeral in multiplicative form. E.g. du, two. Duoble, twofold, double, of two different sorts. Obstine, obstinate, stubborn. Odor. To exhale fragrance, to smell. Offend, to offend, to wrong. Offer, to offer. 
oft, often, ok, eight, okaz, to happen, okul, I, okup, to occupy, ol, than, as, ole, oil, ombre, shadow, shade, ombrel, parasol, umbrella, on, makes fractions out of numerals, e.g. kvar, four, kvaron, fourth part, ond, the wave, oni, pronoun, indefinite plural, one, they, people, man, onkl, uncle, ont, indicates a future participle, active, ob, indicates collective numerals, e.g. du, two, duop, two together. Opportun, opportune, convenient. Or, gold. Ord, order. Ordinar, ordinary, common, usual. Ordon, to order, to command. Orel, the ear. Os indicates the future. Ost, a bone. Ot indicates the future participle passive. Of, an egg. Po, pats, peace. Path, to shoot. Pag, to pay. Pudge, a page. Pile, straw. Pal, pale. Palaz, a palace. Palp, to feel, to handle gently. Palpebre, eyelid. Pan, bread. Pantalon, trousers. Paper, paper. Pardon, to pardon, to forgive. Parents, relation. Parquer, by heart, by memory. Parol, to speak, to talk. Part, part, portion, share. Pas, to pass, to go by. Pastre, priest, clergyman. Pash, to step, to stride. Patr, father. Patrui, fatherland. Pets, a morsel. Pel, to pursue, to chase. Pen, to endeavour, to do one's best. Pend, to hang. Pens, to think. Pendre, to draw. Per, through, by, by means of. Perd, to lose. Permes, to permit, to allow. Pes, to weigh, someone or something. Verb, active. Pet, to pray, to beg. Pes, weigh, some number of pounds. Verb, neutral. P, pious. Pied, foot. Peak, to prick, to sting. Pilk, a ball to play with. Pingle, a pin. Pier, a pair. Platz, a place, a square. Platch, to please. Plafon, ceiling. Plank, floor of a room. Play, most, adverb. Plen, full. Blend, to complain. Plezur, pleasure. Pli, more. Plor, to weep, to shed tears. Plume, pen, feather. Pluve, rain. Po, forms distributive numerals, e.g. kvin, five. Bokvin, five apiece. Polv, dust. Pom, Apple, pont, a bridge, popol, 
people, nation. Por, for. Bord, door. Pork, swine, pig, hog. Port, to carry, to wear. Post, after, preposition. Postul, to require, to call for. Push, a pocket. Pushed, post, post office. Pot, a pot. Pov, to be able, can. Brav, being right. Prage, to pray, to say prayers. Prem, to press, to oppress. Pren, to take. Prepar, to prepare. Pres, to print. Prescau, almost, nearly. Pret, ready. Present, to present, to represent, to introduce. Pri, concerning, on, of, about. Printemp, the spring. Pro, for the sake of. Profund, deep, profound. Proxim, adjective, near, nigh. Promen, to walk, to take a walk. Promes, to promise. Propon, to propose. Propre, one's own. Prov, to try, to essay. Prudent, prudent, reasonable. Prunt, to borrow, to lend. Pulv, gunpowder. Pulvor, powder. Pun, to punish. Poop, a doll. Pur, pure, clean. Push, to push. Putr, to rot, to putrefy, to grow putrid. Ro, rud, a wheel. Radi, a ray, a beam, a spoke of a wheel. Radik, root. Rakont, to relate, to tell. Ramp, to creep, to crawl. Rand, the bank, shore, edge, border. Rapid, rapid, swift. Raz, to shave. Re, again, back, re. Reg, to reign, to govern. Regn, kingdom, realm. Regul, a rule. Reg, a king. Rect, straight. Recompense, to recompense, to reward. Rencont, to meet with. Renverse, to overthrow, to pull down. Respond, to answer. Rest, to remain. Ritsev, to receive. Reach, rich. Read, to laugh. Regard, to look at, regard. Ring, a ring. Repet, to repeat. Repose, to repose, to take rest. River, a river. Romp, to break. Rond, circle. Rost, to fry, to roast. Rose, a rose. Rouge, red. End of section 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Section 11 of Dr. Esperanto's International Language Introduction and Complete Grammar. Saw. Sabbat. Saturday. Sable. Sand. Saj. Wise, sage. Sack, a sack, a bag. Sal, salt. Salt, to spring, to jump. Salut, to salute, to hail. Sam, same. 
san sound sane healthy sang blood sankt holy sacred sap soap sat satiate full save to save stsi to know se if said but sage a chair a seat sick dry sem to sow semine a week sen without sense sense meaning send to send sent to feel perceive sep seven search to look for to search serpent serpent snake serur to lock serve to serve ses six severe severe sharp see oneself himself themselves etc seed to sit sigel to seal sign a sign signif to signify to mean silent to be silent simil resembling similar like simple simple common signor lord master scribe write school to shake to jog sobr sober societ society soif to be thirsty sol soul only unique somer summer son to sound songe to dream sonor to buzz to hum sort lot chance destiny fate sauvage savage wild spets a species kind smegul mirror looking glass spear to respire to breathe sprit witty stall stable stall star to stand stell star stomac stomach strat a street sub under beneath subit sudden such to suck suffer to suffer sufich sufficiently enough suk the juice suker sugar sun sun soup soup super above preposition super above adverb at the top sur on upon surd deaf adjective surtut coat show shine to seem appear chancel to totter to stagger change to change shaum foam scum shell shell shirts to jest joke she she sheep ship sheer to tear schloss lock schmier to smear to spread sprutz to spout to sprinkle schnur a rope a string a cord spar to spare shrunk cupboard clothes press stall steel stell to steal 
Stoff, stuff. Stone, stone. Stop, to stop, to cork. Strump, stocking. Stoop, step. Stupar, staircase, stairs, ladder. Shoe, shoe. Schuld, to owe, to be indebted. Shoot, to empty out, corn, etc. Schwell, to swell. Schwit, to sweat. To, table, table. Tabul, a board. Tag, day. Tailor, tailor. Tamen, yet. However, tapish, carpet, taug, to be of use, to be fit for, te, tea, tegment, roof, teler, plate, temp, time, ten, to hold, tent, to tempt, ter, earth. Terur, terror. Tia, such. Tial, therefore, for this reason. Tiam, then, at that time. Tie, there. Tiel, so, in such a manner. Tim, to fear. Tio, it, this, that. Tiom, so, as much or many. Tir, to draw, to pull. Tiu, that. Tol, linen. Tomb, a grave, a tomb. Tond, to shear, to cut the hair. Tondre, to thunder. Dra, through. Traduk, translate. Tranch, to cut. Tranquil, tranquil, quiet. Trans, over, across, tre, very greatly, exceedingly, trem, to tremble, to shake, to shiver, tren, to draw, to drag, to trail, three, three, drink, to drink, thro, two, thromp, to deceive, Throv, to find. Through, a hole. Tui, immediately. Tuk, a handkerchief. Tur, a tower. Turment, to torment. Turn, to turn. Tus, to cough. Tush, to touch, to lay one's hand on. Tut, hole. Total, complete. U. U indicates the imperative in verbs. Ui, bearing, containing, i.e. a thing, containing or bearing something, as a tree bearing fruits, a country with inhabitants, e.g. cigar, a cigar, cigarui, a cigar box, bom, an apple, bomui, Apple tree. Turk, a Turk. Turkui, Turkey. Ul, a man, possessing some quality, e.g. rich, rich. Richul, a rich man. Um, an affix without definite meaning. It may be translated by various words. Ung, nail. Uno. One. Urb. Town. City. Urs. A bear. Us. Indicates the conditional, subjunctive. Util. Useful. Us. To make use of. Vo. Vax. Wax. Van. Vain. Fruitless. Vang, cheek. Vapor, vapor. Varm, warm. 
vast, vast, spacious, vase, vessel, vec, to awake, velk, to fade, to wither, ven, to come, vend, to sell, vendred, Friday, venen, poison, venom, venge, to revenge, to avenge, venk, to vanquish, vent, wind, ventr, belly, ver, truth, verity, verd, green, verk, to write, to invent, to make, as an author, verm, worm, versh, to pour, vesper, evening, vest, to clothe, vesto, clothes, veter, the weather, vetur, to journey, in a carriage, in a ship, etc., v, you, thou, viand, meat, flesh, vid, to see, village, village, vin, wine, vintr, winter, violon, violin, vir, a man, a male, vish, to wipe, vitr, glass, vive, to live, visage, face, visage, voce, voice, voi, way, voc, to call, vol, to wish, vort, a word, vost, a tale, wund, to wound, zo, zorg, to take care of, to provide for, to be solicitous. End of section 11. End of Dr. Esperanto's International Language, Introduction and Complete Grammar by Ludovic Lazarus Zamenhof.